I was sat in my office, I was staring at the same four walls. I was just thinking, can I keep doing this for another 25 years? You know, I'm always looking for that environment in which I can be the dumbest person in the room. In some ways, the bigger risk was, was staying. You yeah. know, it was the, the bigger risk was staying in my job. The Taylor family just choosing how we want to live life. And, you know, we don't want to live life just on that treadmill, on that hamster wheel the whole time. Just, you know, just the whole thing, I think, just kept it kept blowing my mind. It was, you know, it was it was light bulb moments really all the way through. We, we bought a property, um, three beds property, converted into a seven bed all on suite HMO. We bought another one at the same time, literally a month later in auction. You know, I, I've left my permanent you know, employment. I mean, I, I think if, if you'd said that to me, I was going to do that three, four years ago, there's, I'd have just not believed you. There's no way. Hello and welcome to today's episode. And as you can see, if you are watching this or you'll be able to hear very shortly, if you're listening to this, I am joined by a special guest today. I have Michael Taylor, the property GP joining me. It's great to have you on, Michael. How are you today? Yeah, thanks, Mark. Yeah, all good. Thanks. Sun's not shining, but yeah, all good. Hey, if you live in this country, the sun's hardly ever shining, so we can't rely Correct. on that, can we? Correct. So Michael has a story, obviously has a very demanding job being a GP uh, and has decided that he wanted to get into property with his uh, lovely wife and has built up, you know, a successful property business. So uh, the reason we have Michael joining us today is to really tell us a bit about himself, to tell us about his property journey and everything like that, and to just generally have a good old chat, which I always enjoy doing with Michael himself. So Michael, for the people that don't know or have heard of you before, can you tell us a bit about yourself, please, mate? Yeah, thanks, Mark. Well, uh, so, uh, so my name is Michael Taylor, so I'm a GP in Hampshire. Um, I have been a GP for, well, I've been, a, I've been a doctor for 20 years. Um, I've been a GP for 15 years. Uh, I've been a partner for most of that time. Uh, I was senior partner for eight years. Um, so I've, I've had plenty of NHS, uh, experience. I, I, I train GP, so I take sort of baby doctors and turn them, train them into, into GPs. Um, <clears throat> I also was the what's called the PCN clinical director. So GP practices over a wider area sort of all come together to try and share resources. And uh, I was the clinical director of of our local PCN for a while. Um, I'm an appraiser. I, I just I guess, you know, I've I suppose like many of us really, you know, we've we've probably had good careers. You know, we've we've either been in the corporate world or perhaps public sector and, you know, just sort of. I suppose you know running on that hamster wheel trying to make something of our of our careers trying to make something of our lives and and, and I think for me in the NHS you know clinical care so looking after patients that's our bread and butter that's the stuff that we love if I'm honest and then we're just trying to think right what else can I what else can I do that keeps me interested here what else can I do that challenges me challenges me that that um sort of keeps my career ticking over and not getting stagnant because again you know as a doctor actually what I trained for 15 20 years ago well actually my day-to-day -day is very very similar you know whether you know, I'm sitting in clinic or, or you know patients will come and see me and 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 that's exactly the same today as it was 20 years ago so I don't know I think you know 2019 um I was sat in my office I was staring at the same four walls I was just thinking, can I keep doing this for another 25 years? I've tried so many different things, so many different ways of keeping myself interested, of um, of sort of furthering my career. And, and yet here I am in my in the same room, staring at the same four walls, doing the same job day after day after day. And is, is that something I can keep doing? And, you know, 2020 came and obviously COVID and that was interesting and different and it was a bit of a challenge. And then coming out of COVID, it, it, it was frankly a bit of a disaster and and uh you know the, the just that that pent up demand and obviously covid was exhausting and anyway just was really clear to me that you know i'm married i've got three kids you know the nhs is is financially not really providing or giving perhaps what it what perhaps i could i could earn elsewhere but actually actually just my day-to-day -day enjoyment of life my day-to-day Kind of running on that treadmill, running around that hamster wheel of just the day in, day out, day in, day out was uh, was was pretty exhausting. And, and actually, it was time for me to find something different. Time for me to do something different. 
Brilliant, brilliant. And I expect, you know, it's a demanding job anyway. It's a busy job for you, you know. And, of course, COVID put a big, massive strain on the NHS and you're all called in and, you know, hats off to you all as well because, you know, a lot of people putting their lives on the line, so to speak, with with something that we weren't 100% sure what was going on with. So, you know, always massive kudos to, to everybody involved there because it must have been an absolutely horrible time for for everybody involved, so to speak. So, you know, coming out of that... It also makes you think about the future a bit more, I'm guessing. I think we've all had plenty of time to sort of ponder what was going on and things, but certainly people in that in that industry, in that business, um, a lot more. So you you were thinking about, you know, how can we bring in another income, so to speak? How can we have sort of like a legacy piece, I'm guessing, a bit like I, I wanted to make sure that if nothing else, I had something to leave my kids, something tangible. Uh, yeah. And of course, a retirement fund for us as well. So what sort of brought you into the, the pin environment? Yeah, so I think that's right. So I think it was, you know, it was just it was thinking, I, I mean, I felt pretty trapped. You know, I just felt like I've trained for one thing. This is the only thing really realistically I can I can do and earn a, a sensible income at the same time. I could I could proper perhaps switch careers completely or, or but actually to, you know, maintaining income. We've got a mortgage, et cetera, you know three kids um at the time uh i think uh where are we now so yeah at the time sort of maybe 12 10 and, and 9 something like that and um was not spending as much time with them as i wanted and exactly all of that much just thinking right how can i how can i just slightly start easing myself out of the nhs if, if that's where i want to go but at least how can i protect this income uh how can i look to earn uh, I don't want to earn more, but I just want to replace what what I'm earning and yeah, leave a legacy and spend more time more time with the kids. So, um, <clears throat> so I was down the um, pub one evening with my good friend John Woodman, um, who is I think pretty well known on the on the pin circuit, and just moaning to him about this um, uh, down the pub, and he lent me Simon's book, um, Property Magic. Uh, I read I read that book in sort of a couple of evenings and then read it again and then gave it to my wife and she read it and you know the book's great and obviously it's it, it doesn't really tell you how to do it it just explains just all of the different ways of of making money out of property and I, I had no idea absolutely zero idea we'd thought about investing in property previously we talked about it a little bit over the years and I you know I'd, I'd sat down and I'd, you know, I'd done my sums and I thought oh hang on if we take money out of our mortgage at and then if we then use that to go and buy another property and then we rent it, well, it's it's not, you know, I couldn't get the numbers to work. And I was like, oh, it, it doesn't work. You know, property investing is it's not for me. And um, it wasn't until I read Simon's book that just blew my mind. And um, so then I signed up to his accelerator, three-day accelerator, and then uh, onto Mastermind straight after that. Oh, amazing, amazing. It, it is a great eye-opener. I, I had the same. I think we all have those moments, don't we, in life where we're, we're interested in stuff. And I, I, I set out a 25-year plan on single lets. And it was to buy initially a couple of little two up, two down terraced houses, hope that the capital growth went up, hope that the boilers didn't blow up in that time so I could refinance the money because if they did, I was only going to make enough money to probably replace a boiler and I haven't made anything that year. And that was my way of thinking. It was like, you know, you don't know what you don't know as the saying goes. Yeah. And then yeah. I Googled how to make money in property. And then I started reading the books. And it yeah. was just like, my my word, I didn't know you could do all of these different ways of, of helping people as well. So you, yeah. you came on the three-day accelerator, which I yeah. always say is, that's a real eye-opener as well, because it gives you the opportunities to learn how to talk to people, how to talk to, so to speak, agents, vendors. It also gets you thinking, doesn't it, creatively. You know, yeah. a, a lot of the time there's, there's some good role play there. That really yeah. gets you thinking, well, I've had a good conversation with somebody today and I know it was in a safe environment and it was a bit of fun, but I could see myself doing this. And did, did you find that sort of thing? Yeah, I, I, absolutely. Like like it, you know, just the whole thing, I think, just kept it kept blowing my mind. It was, you know, it was it was light bulb moments really all the way through. And, uh, you know, I did it virtually. Uh, it was still we were still in that kind of COVID restrictions and um, we did it virtually and yeah you know every session I was like oh my gosh this is just this is you know this is something I can do this is this is this has got legs this is something that you know financially actually we can manage that that makes sense and there's just so many so many different ways of 
of of doing this so many different ways of 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 earning and of growing our business in property so you know coming from that place of thinking over the years thinking well we, we'd like to invest in property but we can't it's not possible i can't do it to then you know from a career point of view going right i've got to do something else to then hearing about all this stuff at the accelerator and you know mastermind and just like i say just those light bulbs going off all the time was just uh yeah it was it was enthusing it was it was encouraging it's like right let's you know i can do this we can do this let's let's do it yeah yeah i mean i was initially very very skeptical about yep. all of this when i when i started reading about it or when i started looking into it and i just thought i'm not 100 percent sure that this 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 is what it says it is but also it's taking that knowledge and those learnings and things and incorporating them into stuff that you want to do because when i when i started obviously we know i i did rent to rent and things like that but yeah the people were teaching a very old-fashioned way of doing rent to rent when i when i first and i thought to myself i don't want to do it like that uh, yeah. it doesn't make any sense to be putting loads and loads and loads of money into somebody else's property and things so you go you, yeah. and you can start to tweak things to to your own needs and and realistically what you're happy with can't you so which yeah. uh, which mastermind program did you do again so i did virtual three so again it was still three. yep so it was still uh still covid so um you know but that worked perfectly for me so that was we'd, we're right down in hampshire on the south coast and um you know three kids and life and football training and this that and the other it, it was great i could i could um do it from home we when restrictions were lifted a little bit we we did meet up uh our little mastermind group a couple of times in london uh, and that was great too and then the, we had the final one in person so that was that was nice oh that's nice i mean the thing is what a great thing to be doing a lot of people you know yep. during covid were just getting drunk or just you know <laughs> sitting with feet up and things like that but it, it really was a time and i know it was still quite busy for you obviously uh being a gp as well but also a great use of your time to come out of those sort of situations with a new skill with the knowledge that nobody can take anything away from you and i think that that's really commendable because a lot of people wasted that time and will look back and think well it was a laugh but i could have done so much more with it um and and you did yeah well i did yeah we we changed our lives i mean you know at, before i started mastermind i was working 40 hours a week um you know within within three or four months i was like right i need to actually for me i need to spend more time on this so i went down to 30 hours a week um and uh you know within the nhs and and so spent more time on on the property stuff and yeah just really we threw ourselves in both footed really um uh, and my lovely wife laura and the two of us we just you know shared resources we called landlords we went and visited estate agents we went on viewings we we you know we tag team depending on who was working working when and and um yeah got it got it done really Oh, that's brilliant. And I think it's also brilliant that you got your partner's support because I can imagine uh, yeah, I have my partner's support, but she just doesn't have anything to do with property. Um, yeah. but there are times where you just think, oh, it'd be great if you could just nip off and you could do that and handle that or look after that. Because obviously we've got our own traits as well. And, and you know, something that I always think is very important is the wealth dynamics. Yep. Um, so you and Laura, are you different wealth dynamics or are you the same? No, we're, we are literally opposite ends. So um so i i'm on that sort of on that steel side that that lord sort of mechanics that that left top left corner um and always a blaze bottom right um deal maker so yeah we we complement each other pretty well um i will sit there and work through all the numbers and do all the all that drivelly like <laughs> nonsense stuff of like working it all out and then give the phone to laura and she'll call the landlord or go and go and visit the estate agent and sweet talk them into all sorts of things so yeah it, it's uh it works nicely that's brilliant that is brilliant and of course sometimes people are very similar in which case there can be conflicts of who's doing mm. what and everything but i love that because my my wife is a steel she's she's very much a lord so yeah. stick her in, in stick her behind a uh, you know a monitor give yeah. her some spreadsheets or anything to fill in and she's her eyes light up whereas <laughs> for me I'm, I'm all blaze so i'm very much like laura it's just like oh no 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 you do all of that sort of thing and just let yeah. me go out and talk to people so yeah. it is good that you've got that that compliment so uh tell us about then your property journey and what, what, you know how it all started your first sort of yep. deals and where you're up to now yeah so um so you know we spent we spent a good a good six month plus i guess really thinking about right what is what is the goal you know what is the what do we want out of property and and um you know it became really clear that 
you know, we needed the cash flow. That's that was, you know, for some folk, of course, property is great for capital growth, that kind of longer term, that sort of maybe a pension fund or, you know, for us, it was cash flow. We, we needed high cash flowing properties. Um, and uh, so we, um, HMOs was the obvious, really the obvious, um, the obvious route for us. And, um, you know, we do, we do Airbnb our own house when we go away. So we've done that for many years. So we, we, uh, do that every single summer for about the last eight years plus. Um, so we had a bit of experience of just making a little bit of money from property. Um, but we were like, right, HMOs. And um, first deal that we then went for was a uh, big block of flats. Um, had well, it had five flats in it. Um, two or maybe three of them were HMOs. Um, absolutely amazing property. Uh and we spent 15,000, this is a story, this is, you know, spent 15,000 pounds, we put in planning, we had architects fees, blah, 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 um, wanting to, to change things around a little bit. And uh, and then seven months into conveyancing, there's a big fire in the basement and the sellers pulled out. And, you know, that was a real, that was, I look back on that now and, um, you know, that was because this is property, right? And, you know, some things go really well in property, some things don't. This was our first ever deal seven months, 15,000 pounds. And, you know, there was a real moment there where we, we were sitting down in the kitchen. We're like, you know, are we going to do this? Is this something that we can really, is this something we're going to pursue? Um, or actually, is this just, we can't do this and, you know, we've lost money and what are we doing? Um, and so it was a real moment and it was like, no, this is a hundred percent what we want to be doing. This is a hundred percent what we need to be doing. Um, so, you know, we went out, we, um, <clears throat> The, the we, we bought a property um three beds property converted into seven bed all on suite hmo we bought another one at the same time literally a month later in auction so you know a c3 three bed terrace house we bought in auction that we then got planning on and converted that into seven bed all on suite hmo and and we just we just threw ourselves into it and we trusted the process um we uh were writing landlord letters we were dating builders i spent a year dating builders literally <laughs> literally dating builders took them out for coffee like went on lunch dates like you know in, tried to invite them around to come come on viewings with us um tried to see you know who was going to be helpful in terms of giving us quotes or just general rough ideas as to, you know just having coming from absolutely nowhere literally nowhere just having no idea how much a refurb was going to cost no idea was it 80 grand was it 300 grand i had i had zero zero idea um so i you know we just threw ourselves into getting that team around us getting the people around us that were gonna that are good at the stuff that we knew we couldn't do mm -hmm. you know architects you know what can we do with this property you know talk us through it i i went and knocked on the doors of architects and went in and and tried to see who would sit me down with a cup of tea and go through some plans together. And I just, I made a nuisance of myself, but I knew that I couldn't do this stuff. And I knew that I needed the people around me who were capable of doing it. Um, and so we have, uh, you know, we, we're now kind of cookie cutting HMOs really, um, you know, three beds to seven beds all on suites um, in mainly in Portsmouth, but along that South coast. Um, and yeah, just, just growing the portfolio, I we're we're getting close. So we're 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 uh we're on well we're doing deal six at the moment. I think you know we are just um I think we probably need probably nine in order to really replace my NHS income. Um and then once we hit that number, I think we'll then just stop and we'll think, right, is this you know, what do we do next? What what's the next plan? Um and where do we go from here? Because we're not we don't we don't really want to Build the world you know we 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 first goal is is to replace income and then and then stop and go right where are we now what do we want to do uh and how, how do we want to do it and um so that's where we are i love that i love it because you've got your goal you've got your vision yep. you know what you want yeah yep. that's what it's all about and you're taking the action on it and of course yep. you know i i always say the same thing you know it because you're involved in it you know, property, we just don't go. It's not an upwards tra trajectory and everything's great. And as soon as you know what you're doing, you get out there and you start making all this money. And everything. it's a complete and utter rock. Like anything in life and anything that's yeah. actually worth doing. It's hard times 
you know, there's bad times and there's yep. good times. But if yep. you are consistent and persistent in it, which you and uh, Laura have been, it's, yep. it's it's a good place to be. And of course, you found what works in your area. It sounds like, you yep. know, take these three beds. I bet you can, yep. I bet you look now a couple of pictures. You're like, I know this will work now. This, yep. this will work perfectly. I just need to walk around it, double check yep. it. Um, yep. Now you know the numbers. And I love that yep. as well, because you don't need to know everything. You yep. just need to know the right people that do to be able yep. to help and support what you're doing. So you are the director of your business. Uh, yep. And of course, nine properties gives you options then, doesn't it? To be a, yep. a, a, that's the place to sit and say, right, what do yep. we want to do now? Do you know what I mean? We've got the young family as well. We've got the kids and things. You know, yep. what do we want to do? Let's start making some memories. And, and I think that's the important thing about life, isn't it? Well, it, it 100%. And I think, you know, uh, last year, so um, at my in my job in the NHS, my partnership, you know, I handed my notice last summer. So I've actually left my partnership at the end of last year. We're not there yet financially. So um, I'm still doing some NHS work in order, you know, for cash flow to, to make it happen. But, you know, I, I've left my permanent, you know, employment. I mean, I, I think if, if you'd said that to me, I was going to do that three, four years ago, there's, I'd have just not believed you. There's no way, you know, absolutely no way. And, and um, the money keeps coming. You know, we are, um, like I say, I'm, I'm doing some stuff to, to help with the cash flow. The properties are generating some money. Um, you know, this summer just gone um, as a family, we, we went to the Olympics and then we spent a week in the South of France and then we spent a month in Spain. You know, my wife's lawyer is a teacher, so we could do that. So, we were we were away for nearly six weeks and we rented out our house and that paid for the whole trip and then some and you're just like you know this is this is we you know, talk about life by design a little bit don't we but this is this is actually just the Taylor family just choosing how we want to live life and you know we don't want to live life just on that treadmill on that hamster wheel the whole time just going through the day job day after day week after week month after month you know faffing over annual leave trying to get annual leave here or there and just you know this is this is the Taylor family now doing life by design and and you know 100% in all honesty you know the property business isn't there to, to sustain us yet I think the the income is coming in we've got some private investment that you know the interest on that is eating into that cash flow but this is business you know we know that when any when any, whenever any small business starts up it always needs of course um some money and some cash behind it so you know we want to grow quickly we are doing that we're 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 living now more than ever just how we want to what we want to be doing as a family um you know i'm here chatting to you on a wednesday morning and you know i'm i, I love it you know this is this is what i want to be doing and this is uh you know we're, we're making choices for to, to live the life that we want that life by design and I'm much happier. My family's much happier because I'm much happier. You know, we're spending the summer in Spain. It's 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 amazing, and it's you know, without property, uh, we wouldn't be able to do this. No, oh, that's great. That's great. And of course, it's stepping off of that treadmill that we all have. That treadmill of life. Yep. And it's just like all of a sudden, it's exciting. It's scary. Yep. Um, and it's you know, obviously, you know, selling your, your selling out of your partnership, leaving that, yep. so to speak, then yep. taking on that work. You yep. know, I, I took voluntary redundancy as well at a time when yep. I, I didn't have anything coming in at the time. So, it, you know what I mean? And it is, it's yep. exciting, but it's also, well, it's just scary. Just, just because you really just don't scary. know, do you? you you're sort right. of, as, as the old saying goes, yeah. just in the process, aren't you? That this, this will be yeah. all right. Yeah, it, it is really scary. And, and you know, obviously, I think, you know, we'd never recommend that someone else did it. I mean, you know, you you clearly quitting a job is, I mean, that you know, you've got to really know that that's the right thing and you've got to work out your finances and all that kind of stuff. So it, it you know, it certainly uh, wasn't done on a whim, but, you know, just the, I think, I think basically, and I've explained it like this before, I think for me where I was, and I think for where I was at work from, you know, thinking it's been a few years of just really thinking, what is it that I want? What is it that I want? I think for me, in some ways, the bigger risk was was staying. You yeah. know, it was the, the bigger risk was staying in my job, doing the same thing week, month, year after year after year. That for me was the bigger risk than the risk of starting something new and stepping out the boat and jumping off the 10 meter high board. And, you know, that that 
sounds all sounds risky and people go oh my gosh you know that but I was like well no actually the bigger risk is just staying put and carrying on you know quietly slowly just not really being myself and and you know that that was the bigger risk and I think that's right we all hit a point where we've had enough we've added up to here and it's just yeah. like we either stay in this uh yeah. and grin and bear it which is no way to live or yeah. we all go at something else and it's exciting and I always say yeah. what's the worst that can happen I mean you know it, money ebbs and flows yeah if you, if you go goes. with the mindset that you know I've got this small pot of money and I can't afford to lose that then yeah. chances are you will lose it at some point and but you won't have anything else coming in because you you have yeah. to spend as you say with your investors and everything you have to spend yeah. to, to accumulate so I think it's great that what you what you're doing is is amazing so you know, you want to get to that nine properties that you, yep. you've got with the cash flow and everything coming in. Uh, yep. And what else, is, you know, what else are you looking at doing in the future, so to speak? Because I know you're a man with plans. Yeah. So, um, so I mean, we, I think, you know, we, we seem to have found ourselves in a position where we're, you know, where we're doing okay. Um, where, so I, you know, Mastermind Virtual 3, I finished as top performer, which was uh, a real privilege and a, and a, and a real honour. And then, I did Property Entrepreneur afterwards, which a lot of people have heard of with Dan Hill. Um, you know, fantastic way of really structuring uh, our processes and, uh, and on our business. And it's kind of sort of one step on, I guess. Mastermind is brilliant for learning how to invest in property. Property Entrepreneur was great for really learning how to turn that into a business. And, uh, you know, I, I did that for a couple of years and, and um, you know, won, the first, won, the, the, won that as well. Um, we've won a few other awards and, and been featured in various other things. And so we've, we've had people coming to us going, you know, can you help us? Can you help us to, with the property stuff? Because you look like you vaguely know what you're doing. And so we are. Um, vaguely know. Yeah, yeah right. Um, but um, yeah, so we, um, you know, we, we're offering a, a portfolio building service. So we, like I say, we've you know, got the team around us. We know what we're doing, this kind of cookie cutter HMO model. So for those who perhaps... Um, you know, are are educated, ideally, who know about property, who know that they want to invest in property, but just maybe don't have the time to do it themselves, or they're not local, then, you know, then we can do that for others. And, uh, and that's, that's exciting. And that's already kicking off and growing. So we're, you know, we're super excited about that. I think, ultimately, um, the HMOs will, will just sit there quietly in the corner, and will just generate monthly cash flow that we will live off that will pay for our mortgage that will pay for our our day-to-day -day lives you know job done um i think then we will then look to uh to, to to blocks of flats and similar i think where perhaps they're a bit less noisy um where there's just more options there's more exit strategies if necessary you've got you know flats you can sell some off you can keep some you blah 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 um uh and and really just see how that grows probably with some a little bit of development but not huge amount of development so you know one beds to two beds etc but just doing I think getting stuck into doing something new and something that just gives us more options which is less noisy it won't generate as much cash flow but that's totally fine because the the HMOs are sat there quietly generating money in the corner so yeah we're you know super excited about what that might look like um, I think as a family, um, we absolutely want to spend as much of our summers away as we possibly can. That's always just been a little bit of a, you know, that when you have these kind of conversations of, you know, if money was no option or if, you know, if you didn't have a job or, or whatever. And actually for us, uh, you know, spending our summers exploring different countries, Italy, Spain, uh, you know, next summer, I think we're going to go island hopping around Greece. And you're just like, oh, this is just this is pretty cool. This is. This is uh, this is what we want to be doing. So, um, yeah, it's you know it's great. I, I think um, I still need lots of support around me. So I still want to be. I always want to be the dumbest person in the room. So I'm always looking to see you know what's out there, what what support, what what mentoring, what you know what. How can I just keep growing? How can I so. You know, the thing is, Mark, I want to be the dumbest person in the room. Like, I, I really do. And, you know, I, I'm the Southampton pin host. And so I, I, you know, we have lots of guys there, some pretty experienced investors, some guys who are pretty new to their journey and, 
you know, I, I'm loving supporting them and, and helping them on their journey. I'm a coach for Simon Zucci's mastermind now. So again, just, I love getting alongside people. You know, that's what I've done in the NHS for many years and training, training GPs. Um, but I, you know, I'm always looking for that environment in which I can be the dumbest person in the room. You know, that, that's great, but I, I, I need also to be surrounded by people who are doing this well, who are doing it, been doing it for years that I can learn from that I can, I can basically just kind of cling on to their coattails and, and um, I don't want to reinvent the wheel. I just want to, you know, I want to just keep moving forward and keep growing. So um, yeah, looking, you know, looking forward to what the future brings, looking forward to um, how that looks. I think the, the, the HMOs, uh, you know, all being well by the end of next year, we'll, we'll hit our target. You know, I think as the portfolio building grows, that will, bring in little chunks of money that we can put down against the debt on the HMOs, the, the private investment that we've had, um, you know, and then as that continues to grow, all being well, the plan then, of course, is just to be our own bank and be able to to fund some of our own stuff. And uh, yeah, it's it's super exciting, Mark. It's just, it's super exciting just thinking about, you know, where we've come from over the last couple of years, you know, where, where that future will take us and uh, what life might look like. But it's great. No, it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. And you have come a long way in such a short space of time, which is is truly, you know, pushed yourself out of your own comfort zones, out of your boundaries. You've taken action uh, and you've you've been very successful. Like you say, top performer in your mastermind year, which is great. You're pin host, you're now a mastermind coach as well. So you're helping others, uh, which is always a nice place to be because we know you know, where people are coming from and how scary it can be. So to be able to support others, help them, pushing them in the right direction, point them in the right direction, I should say. <laughs> you have to give them a nudge. <laughs> <don't you? laughs> and, yeah. and, and sort of just moving yourself forward is great. You, you yeah. know what you want from the future. You have the yeah. options now. And yeah. it is it is such a nice place to be that, yes, we still have problems. You know, there's still issues. We still have worries about things. But... We have far more control, I think, over ourselves and what we're doing now as well. And those holidays, you know, going, going to the Greek islands and all of those and just just being away is is amazing. And those are the memories you see that your your children that you can cherish for life. Uh, and that is one of the my biggest regrets is when I was in my corporate job was I missed so much of my kids growing up that uh, I wish I could roll back the time to sort that out now. But I, I just try and make up for it now. Yeah, it's true, isn't it? And like, you know, we've talked about earlier, but, you know, money really does come and go. Like it, it just, it really comes and goes, but but time just goes, isn't it? I mean, we you know, like you say, we can't get that time back. So, um, yeah, I, you know, we, we're all doing this for time, aren't we? We're all doing this for our families. We're all doing this to, you know, I don't want to wait till I've retired to be able to go and do stuff. You know, it's just, so it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, what can I say, Mark? It's, it's, it's great. It has, my life has completely pivoted. It's completely and utterly changed direction over the last last couple of years. Um, and you know, we're in such a healthy place. It there's well, we're in such a healthy place. You know, it's it's great, and we just want to keep pushing on and yeah, keep and pushing on, reaching our, dreams, reaching our goals. Yeah, exactly. No, amazing, amazing. Well, thank you ever so much for your time today. It's really nice to have these conversations, to see, you know, different points of view, people coming from different backgrounds and everything as well. If anybody would like to reach out to you, Michael, what's the best way to do that? Yeah, so come and find me on the socials. So uh, Michael Taylor, Facebook, Instagram, um, Powerable Property is our business in which we're um, growing our HMO portfolios. So you can come and find us on the socials there as well. Um, or our email is hello at powerballproperty.com so yeah come and find us guys come and uh, come and connect brilliant stuff brilliant stuff well once again great to have you on my friend and thank you very much for joining me here thank you mark i've loved it thanks so much brilliant stuff brilliant stuff thanks. so if you are interested in any further help or you want to reach out to michael you obviously have the details there we'll put them in the show notes as well uh, if you do need any help with your property investing, do check out pinfurtherlearning.co.uk for all your property investing needs. And I look forward to you joining me in the next episode very soon. You all take care and bye for now.